This is Twit. Uh, okay, so as we know, Security Now is primarily an audio podcast. But even those watching, you know, though it remains unclear to me why anyone would, don't have the advantage of looking at my show notes. If anyone were to be reading the notes, they would see that the spelling of the name of this new attack is far more, shall we say, acceptable and polite company than the attack's verbal pronunciation. But this is an audio podcast, and the story of this attack that I very much want to share refers to the attack by name. And that name, which rhymes with Stuxnet, is spelled F-U-X-N-E-T. And there's really no other way to pronounce it than just to spit it out. But I'm just going to say F-Net for the sake of the children. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> because, Thank you. Yes. Be, you know, so it's not really an F-bomb, but it's audibly identical, and there's no point in saying it. Everybody understands how you would pronounce F-U-X-N-E-T, uh, which is what the Ukrainians named their the weapon, which they reportedly, and this was confirmed by an independent uh, security company successfully launched into the heart of Russia. So with that preamble and, you know, explanation, let's look at the very interesting attack that was reported last week by security week, their headline, which also did not shy away from using the attacks name said destructive ICS malware F net used by Ukraine against Russian infrastructure. So here's what we learned from what they wrote. They said in recent months, a hacker group named Blackjack, which is believed to be affiliated with Ukraine's security services. So, you know, as in state sponsored, has claimed to have launched attacks against several key Russian organizations. The hackers targeted ISPs, utilities, data centers, and Russia's military, and allegedly caused significant damage and exfiltrated sensitive information. Last week, Blackjack disclosed the details of an alleged attack aimed at Moss Collector, M-O-S-C-O-L-L-E-C-T-O-R, Moss Collector, a Moscow-based company responsible for underground infrastructure, meaning things like water, sewage, and communication systems. So, quoting, they said, Russia's industrial sensor and monitoring infrastructure has been disabled, so said the hackers. It includes Russia's network operations center that monitors and controls gas, water, fire alarms, and many others, including a vast network of remote sensors and IoT controllers. I don't want to say, so the hackers claimed to have wiped database, email, internal monitoring, and data storage servers. In addition, they claimed to have disabled some 87,000 87, sensors including ones associated with airports, subway systems, and gas pipelines. To achieve this, they claim to have used FNET, a malware they described as Stuxnet on steroids, which enabled them to physically destroy sensor equipment. You know, our longtime listeners and anybody who's been in, you know, around IT will re recall that Stuxnet was a, a, a previous also physically destructive malware, I guess we have to call it malware, even though we were apparently part of the U.S. participated, uh, or U.S. intelligence services was involved in its creation. It caused the centrifuges used in Iran to overspin and essentially self-destruct. So, those were being used to enrich uranium at, at the time. Anyway, so so that, that's why they're calling this thing Stuxnet on steroids, is that they worked to cause actual physical damage, as we'll see in a second, to hardware. There's a big a difference, extent, though, between destroying centrifuges, which have one purpose, which is enriching uranium, and destroying sensors, which... which can, 
prevent gas leaks. And I mean, yeah. this is a yeah. civilian attack. I, I Finish the story, yeah. but I would love to talk at the end of it about how you feel about this. Good. And I, and I agree with you. So they wrote, FNET has now started to flood the RS-485 uh, slash MBUS and is sending random commands to 87,000 embedded control and sensory systems. And they did say, while carefully excluding hospitals, airports, and other civilian targets. Now, they said that. So, th you know, they share some of our sensitivity to that. And i do question, you know, given that they're also claiming 87,000 some sensors, how they can be that careful about what's, you know, what they've attacked and what they haven't. Anyway, they, they, they the, the, the report goes on saying the hackers claims are difficult to verify, but the industrial and enterprise IOT cybersecurity firm Clarity was able to conduct an analysis of the FNET malware based on information and code made available by Blackjack. Clarity pointed out that the actual sensors deployed by Moss Collector, which are used to collect physical data such as temperature, were likely not themselves damaged by FNET. Instead, the malware likely targeted roughly 500 sensor gateways. So, right, so the idea is that the, the, the gateway is a device out located remotely somewhere, and it has RS-485 lines running out to a ton of individual sensors. So, so it's the sensor data collector and forwarding device. So the malware targeted around 500 of these sensor gateways, which communicate with the sensors over a serial bus such as RS-485 or meter bus that was mentioned by Blackjack. These gateways are also connected to the internet to be able to transmit data to the company's global monitoring system. So that was probably the means by which the FNET uh, malware got into the sensor gateways. Clarity notes, quote, if the gateways were indeed damaged, the repairs could be extensive, given that these devices are spread out geographically across Moscow and its suburbs and must be either replaced or their firmware must be individually reflashed. Clarity's analysis of FNET showed that the malware was likely deployed remotely. Then, once on a device, it would start deleting important files and directories, shutting down remote access services to prevent remote restoration, and deleting routing table information to prevent communication with other devices. FNET would then delete the file system and rewrite the device's flash memory. Once it has corrupted the file system and blocked access to the device, the malware attempts to physically destroy the NAND memory chip and then rewrites the UBI volume to prevent rebooting. In addition, the malware attempts to disrupt the sensors connected to the gateway by flooding their serial communications channels with random data in an effort to overload the serial bus and sensors, essentially performing an internal DOS attack on all the devices the gateway is connected to. And I'll argue that if these are not sensors, but these are actuators, as you said, Leo, this could be causing some true damage. I mean, like true infrastructure. Well, they said subway systems, damage. airports, gas pipelines. Uh, yeah. 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 Clarity explained, quote, during the malware operation, it will repeatedly write arbitrary data over the meter bus channel. This will prevent the sensors and the sensor gateway from sending and receiving data, rendering the sensor data acquisition useless. Therefore, despite the attacker's claim of physically destroying 87,000 devices, wrote Clarity, it seems that they actually managed to infect the sensor gateways and were causing widespread disruption by flooding the meter bus channel connecting the sensors to the gateway, similar to network fuzzing the different connected sensor equipment. As a result, it appears only the sensor gateways were bricked and not the end sensors themselves. So... Okay, I, I particularly appreciated the part about attempting to physically destroy the gateway's NAND memory chip because it could happen. As we know, NAND memory is fatigued 
by writing because writing and erasing, which is, needs to be part of writing, is performed by forcing electrons to tunnel through insulation, thus weakening its dielectric properties over time. So the attacking malware is likely writing and erasing and writing and erasing the NAND memory over and over as rapidly as it can. And since such memory is likely embedded into the controller and it's probably not field replaceable, that would necessitate replacing the gateway device and perhaps all 500 of them spread across Moscow and its suburbs. And even if the NAND memory was not rendered unusable, the level of destruction appears to be quite severe. Wiping stored data in directories and killing the system's boot volume means that those devices probably cannot be remotely repaired. Overall, I'd have to say that this extremely destructive malware was well named. And we, we, we live in an extremely and increasingly cyber dependent world. Everyone listening to this podcast knows how rickety the world's cybersecurity truly is. So I, I shudder at the idea of any sort of all-out confrontation between superpowers. I don't want to see that. Do you think there should be a, I don't know, Geneva Convention-style accord between nations about cyber warfare? I mean, it's a, it's, it's, the problem is you can do it, but then you're just going to escalate. It's going to go back and forth, just, which is why we decided, for instance, not to allow bioweapons. Now, still get, they still get used. Uh, but it's again, you know, the the civilized world agrees not to use uh, biologic uh, weapons in war. Um, well, and the feeling is, of course, that COVID was a lab escape, well, right? I mean, that, there's I mean, some there's evidence, no, but not a lot. Uh, it's, there's that's, no evidence. That's but, a question. But, yeah, <clears throat> it wasn't a very good. It wasn't a very effective uh, uh, warlike attempt since it killed far more people in China than it did elsewhere. But anyway, um, well, clearly a mistake. Yeah, yes. it wasn't intentional. So, uh, what do you think? I mean, That's, so I, I agree with you. The, the The problem is, um, it it's tempting because it doesn't directly hurt people, right? I mean, so like like right now we're in a cold war. We're, we're constantly on this podcast talking about state-sponsored attacks. Yeah. Well, those are attacks. Especially infrastructure attacks. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole colonial pipeline thing, that, you know, right. th that really damaged the U.S. And, I mean, it was a true attack. So, so you know, and, and we, just, we just talked about how China was telling some of their – China told their commercial sector, you need to stop using windows. Right. You need to stop using, you know, this, this Western computer technology because the West is able to get into it. So that, that was the first indication we really had that, that as I put it at the time that we're giving as well as we're getting. Unfortunately, this is all happening. I mean, I, I, I wish none of it was happening, but the, the problem is security is porous. And, and I, I guess the, 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 the reason a nuclear weapon and a bioweapon are, are unconscionable, you know, is that they, they are so t tissue damaging. For, for lack of a better word, you know, I mean, they, they really, they, they, re, they're, they're like really going to kill people. Whereas eh, a network got breached. Whoops. You know I mean? It's, it's, it doesn't have the same sort of visceral grip. And unfortunately, here's an example. And, and I'm glad you brought it up Leo that, you know, Ukraine sympathetic as we can be for, you know, their situation. Um, this was a blunt edged attack, right? I mean, this was, you know, sewage and water and gas and airports. And, you know, I mean, it's, they, they couldn't have controlled what damage was, what was caused. And, you know, you mess up water and sewage and you're really hurting 
yeah. actual people who are innocent. Of, or of subways what, you know, or airports or gas pipelines. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know what the answer is. I mean, I'll be, I'm, no, I'm no fan of Putin. He brought the war upon himself, but hurting civilians, I don't know. So it's, it's, this is not a good situation. It is the world we're in. It's the world we're um, in. Yeah. yeah, and it is a it is technology we created. I mean, you know, oh, let's have the password be admin admin because we don't want people, you know, calling us and asking what the password is. Or, you know, I mean, it's like we've made so many bad decisions. And while we're now making them better today, we have seen how long the tale of inertia is. I mean, it's you could also you could argue infinite, you know. St you know, we still have Code Red and Nimda out there, you know, sending packets out somewhere. There's an NT machine just hoping, <laughs> hoping to find something that it can infect. When is it going to die? I, I don't know. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below.